So it's the 11 time Hong Kong Sevens champions, New Zealand, against the four time Hong Kong Sevens champion, Damon Murphy. It's got the atmosphere of a more significant game, this one, doesn't it, Rob? It does indeed. The intensity of their last game against the USA for England and South Africa for New Zealand was just next level. This crowd wants to be entertained. The South Sand is jam packed. Get ready back home, strap in. This is going to be epic. So Dan Bibby starts this game without Tom Mitchell, who's injured, injured in the quarter-final and will play no part in this match. Oli Lindsay Haig in the sweeper position for England has replaced him in the starting lineup. But here come New Zealand. That's Dylan Collier over on the far side there. He's wrapped up by Rory McConaughey. DJ Forbes to La Vubu. New Zealand's leading try scorer here at the Hong Kong Sevens this weekend. And Joe Ravubu in his debut tournament has shown us again what he's made of. That's a cracking score from Ravubu. Well, that is a point proven there by Ravubu. What an effort around the outside. Forbes gives him the ball. There's your chance. He's got Dan Norton in front of him. Oli Lindsay Hay coming across. Yet he absolutely flies round both of them. This man is six foot four. He is 106 kilograms. In simple physics, that should not happen. That is remarkable running from the big Fijian drafted in. What an addition this guy is. They talk about bursting onto the scene. Joe Rabubu has done that. Extras are added by Bodem Waka. What a sight he is in full flight. There's a fair few saying around the world, going back to the old days of having the likes of Frank Eli out there, the whiny boys. Either way, New Zealand have got some serious potency out on these wings. If England give them a chance to get it, it's going to be a long afternoon for them. Well, he's added another component to the New Zealand Sevens team, hasn't he, Joe Dabubu, which perhaps they've been missing in recent times. An out-and-out -out flyer with size out on the wing. Bodin Waka restarts play. McConnor, he's underneath it. Couldn't quite hold on to it. And Dylan Collier snaffles it back. But there has been a knock on him. It'll set the scrum. A bit of a knock on the thumb there. But what a restart. You get height on the ball like that, you've basically got 30 metres to make up. If you're getting a four second hang time on that restart, everyone's got an opportunity. McConaughey got lifted well, but ultimately it's a very hard skill set if the ball's going over your head to claim yeah. that ball, irrelevant of if you're lifted or not. Such an emotional high in the quarterfinals earlier today, yeah. Rob. How difficult is it to get yourself up off the floor again and give your best stuff in a fifth place semi-final? It's so difficult, but that's what you want. You want your Dan Norton's this world to step up, give him opportunity and he'll fly into it. There's Ethan Waddleton flying into the New Zealand defence with some help of, from Charlie Hayter. And here goes Ollie Lindsay Haig. Regan Ware takes care of him, no problem. Bibby in midfield, back to Hayter. That's a play you often see England use, switching it in midfield with the, the big ball carrier Hayter. Here's Haig to Norton. Norton broke the world record for tries scored on Friday night. What a moment that was for him. And here's McConaughey. Looks for the offload, he thought. Richards to Carpentier was out near the touchline, but the big man had to track back there and pick it up, and that's been kicked out of the ruck there by Trail Joas, and Forbes gives it to Collier, and here's another try for Joe Ravubu. Needs no second invitation, and Big Joe's got a double. Ravubu is just something else, isn't it? The turnover from England, we said about the breakdown, that's been the prerequisite previously of these types of games. You need to win it. What a line, holds up two players there. Wallerton buys a little short offload. And Ravuvu, very intelligent line as he blights through. He's such a clever player, not just size, but clearly he's got some thinking ability too. And I love the fact he's got a smile on his face when he scores tries. It's great to see. It's all about enjoying yourself, this game of rugby sevens, on and off the pitch. And Joe Ravuvu has plenty of good energy. And plenty of fine style out there, 14-0 New Zealand lead. You know, growing up in Fiji, I'm pretty sure this place was like a church to him, really worshipping the turf, understanding every single minute on here he's going to enjoy. 
So a clinical start here from the New Zealand Sevens. 14-0, they lead England, two and a half minutes to go. A kick towards Dan Norton, and he just tips that down to himself. Here's Bibby. And Oli Lindsay Haig, little hitch kick from Haig. Lindsay Haig gets away from two, back to Bibby. Charlie Hayter to Norton. Norton on Ravubu. Look at DJ Forbes over there, onto the loose ball. Deep into day three here in Hong Kong, and DJ standing up for New Zealand once again. Bodin Waka with the left foot step, can't quite get through, and they get the penalty, New Zealand. And this is where New Zealand look comfortable. When they go into contact, they secure it so quickly. Their size per man is just outweighing this England team. Conversely, when England go into the breakdown, they're looking like they're getting a bit bullied. There's opportunity to get the ball out. It's harder to move the players. It's a simple equation against New Zealand. Either win the collisions or avoid them. England have an ability to move the ball. They've got dynamism. If you run into the likes of these big New Zealand defenders, you're first of all going to get hit pretty hard, but they're also going to get a secondary wave. The likes of DJ Forbes is running a mock with his turnovers in this game so far. And Dan Norton's being replaced here. Perhaps Simon Amor thinks his race has run this weekend in Hong Kong. And it's Tom Bowen who's replaced him. He's on the wing on the near side. Here's Dan Bibby. They're going to have to go the distance, England, if they're going to get on the board here. Here is Tom Bowen. Charlie Hayter has to go and help really quickly there because New Zealand were all over that ruck. England get the penalty. McConaughey, bit of a hospital ball. Flicks it on. Here's Richard de Carpentier. Steps inside. Richard de Carpentier. But the whistle's gone. Forward pass is the call from the referee. And a nice moment there between Bodin Walker and Richard de Carpentier. He's like, Are you sure, ref? Sure that was forward? You need more than a whistle to stop Richard de Carpentier, as we've seen this weekend. He's been playing like he's possessed, but sadly, it's just not happening for England in this game. These little small moments, really not quite there. Accuracy not up there. Breakdown clear, as we said, not there either. These little moments, a little bit of a fumble there, knock on. Again from Wallerton, throws it forward. I mean, it's marginal, but Damien Lucy's right there. Murphy's there calling it. Fine. Set. So. New Zealand set a scrum just outside the England 22. Two tries to the good in this fifth place semi final. And here's the man who scored both of them. Joe Rabubu goes the cheeky offload, but a little ambitious on that occasion. And Regan Ware will not be able to complete the score. But it's been a very accomplished first seven minutes from the New Zealand Sevens. And they lead England here in Hong Kong by 14 points. Packed to the rafters once again. As New Zealand get us underway in the second half, but that kickoff hasn't gone to plan, so England will get a free kick on the centre spot. Just trying to look for a bit of composure now. Lindsay Haig, he's going to be the playmaker with Dan Bibby looking to change direction, move these big New Zealand players around. Here comes Lindsay Haig. Ollie Lindsay Haig, the show and the go and the hits kick. Ollie Lindsay Haig gets England right back in this game. A wonderful score from the former Harlequin. What a score from Lindsay Haig. Interesting body language on his celebration. And just like him, he does his hair. But have a look at this. One dummy cut gets on the outside of Joaz. He's not got the pace. Lindsay Haig hits the, the, the step. The man often sidestep a sidestep. His feet are ridiculous, but he's a confidence player. And that, to me, didn't look like he had bags of confidence walking back from what was a world-class finish in a world-class rugby environment. So, only Lindsay Haig doing the business for England. And there's the man he's replaced, Tom Mitchell, who's injured for this game. What are England like without Tom Mitchell out there with them, Rob? A different team. I think we've seen that already. With that Mitchell, not just the playmaking ability, but the leadership, the belief. Something changes when he's not on the pitch, and they've got to address it because leadership has to be seen across the board. Here comes Dylan Colley up in New Zealand, and that's a good bit of defensive work there from Charlton Kerr, but both players are injured. So it's six on six here at the Hong Kong Sevens. Richard to Carpentier. 
Another good carry out the guts from him. Lindsay Haig decides to come to the near side to Dan Bibby. Sees some space in behind. Looking for the ball to hold up here. Has he timed it? Not quite. Just a little too heavy from Dan Bibby. And relief on the face of Regan Ware. And we see Collier down. He and Chung Kerr in this corner not looking good. Both of them in serious pain. I think it's both knees on, on account of... Certainly Kerr and Collier's looking like he's straining on there as well. That's not good to see, but what we did see is what Dan Bibb is about. He has been one of the go-to players for England for the last three or four years, a man that's grown in confidence and stature nearly as much as his hair, but he is a great player. He has to step up in games like this. Well, England will bring Rory McConaughey back on the field because Charlton Kerr is still re receiving some attention. He's just getting to his feet now, Charlton Kerr, but he's got a limp on, as does... Dylan Collier for New Zealand. It was a slightly innocuous challenge, wasn't it? But both players seem to get tangled up with each other. And unfortunately for them, we wish them all the best. Picks up injuries. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Sam Dixon's come on for New Zealand. There's Trail Joas in the hooker position. Bowden Walker will feed this scrum. New Zealand leading England 14 7. Still four minutes to go in this fifth place semi final. The winner goes through to the fifth place final to play Argentina. And running away for New Zealand is Sioni Molia. And he will go all the way. Molia. <laughs> As his players embrace him on the way back, and rightly so, that is a statement without words. He has just blown through two English defenders. Dan Bibby, arms flailing. You're going to get a long five foot arm in your face if you try and tackle like that. And that's exactly what he got. Molly are cruising from the south stand, who are in rapturous applause, seeing Tom Bowen's efforts trying to chase back. What a score from a big man. Yeah, there are many players that show Tom Bowen a clean pair of heels. Sione Mollier has done just that. Great impact off the bench from him. It's a tough place now for this England team. Belief looks like it's in tatters. They've got to realise they're still capable of doing some good things as a team. They've got to build on this massive week next week. Also paves the way for a South African dominance. Villamoni Koroi has also come on for New Zealand. He restarts play and he is Lindsay Haig, the man that got England back into this game with a cracking solo try. Rory McConaughey sees a gap. He's through it, McConaughey. Excellent tracking back tackle from Regan Ware. Wayward pass from Bowen. Waddleton in the headgear, picks up a cut earlier on in the tournament. Look at DJ Forbes all over Richard de Carpentier there. How often we see that? It's a very dangerous challenge there it's Andrew Newstub here and he's in trouble he's in on the bench for two minutes yellow card you can see he get a bit pumped up this type of thing happen he's riding the wave of emotion Newstub who only four months ago was painting fences in New Zealand the guy's a real success story but you can't get away with actions like that no matter how physically dominating you are of a game Well, there's another shot of Callum Serka itching to get on the field here. There's two minutes to go. The young 18-year-old, this time last year, is at high school. <laughs> I think he's had the nod, Rob. He should fill in his own form. Just get on the pitch. Let's see what he's got. Apparently, he can skin Dan Norton in training. Right. Holly Lindsay Haig. Dan Bibby know how to skin people. They give it to Charlie Hayter. 21-7. England need to score quickly. Converted tries from New Zealand, so they want to score, and they want to score close to the sticks if they possibly can. Quick hands from Bibby. Bowen, round the outside, gives it to Hayter, but it's gone forward. And it was the defensive work again from Regan Ware that has forced the error from England. And it's irrelevant of which New Zealand team you're playing against. You get very few opportunities and windows to try and capitalise on situations. That was one. Tom Bowen with a line at his mercy, tried to hold the ball up a bit for Hayter. Now, now... Putting Dan Norton back on, I believe, as well as Circa. And here he comes, young Callum Circa. 
for his debut appearance for the England Sevens. He was playing for the Penguins in the Thames down the road at the Hong Kong Football Club in Happy Valley earlier this week. And here he is now, standing out in the right wing. Time back on. And with one man in the sim bin, they've brought back on Ravufu. So let's just hope Circus' first impact is not trying to stop one of the biggest men on the World 7 Series flying. Got on at scrum half. To Mollier. Scored New Zealand's third try, and they've got a penalty. And here comes Ravuvu. Goes straight up the middle. DJ Forbes. More in injured England players in back play. It's Ethan Waddleton who's getting attention now. Looks like a shoulder. Just unable to hold on to that ball. Ravuvu, and he's furious with himself. And they've gone quickly, England, but the referee wants to bring it back and set the line out or has he called time off for the injured player yeah not looking good for Waddleton made a bit of an impact we said about the physicality of this tournament not just this game but it's not looking good it looks like he's damaged his shoulder we're into the green time on the top left you can see but it's all about the welfare of this young man he's a special player Waddleton he was one of these guys only 18 months ago again was playing at school won the Rosley Park Sevens a massive national sevens tournament back in England it's not a good sight to see but let's hope it's nothing too serious the way he's flexing his hand there on the arm suggests that it's not too serious. Hopefully just a stinger for Ethan Waddleton. The toll this tournament, this three-day event, takes on these players. They all get in a plane on Monday and head to Singapore and do it all over again. So, time's up on the clock. It's the final play. England can't win it. But let's see if they can get the ball into the hands of Callum Serka, who's out in the wing. And here they go. They're down to six, England. Richard to Carpentier. He carries it towards the New Zealand 22. Lindsay Hay goes to the near side, chips over the top. And DJ Forbes will just let that dribble over the sideline. <laughs> And the referee will call it a day. And the players are hunched over. They're exhausted. That ends England's tournament. And New Zealand will go on to the fifth place final. Later on against Argentina. They have beaten England here by 21 points to seven.